Hey guys, welcome to our 80s Life podcast. I'm Abby. And I'm Keith. And today we are joined with our friends and we watched Beetlejuice. Beetlejuice. Wait, <laughs> don't say it three times. It's showtime. All right, thanks for joining us. Uh, first off, I want to introduce our friends. We have Travis. You guys have met him before. And Cheryl. And we have a newbie. And we have a newbie. This is Dave, everybody. Welcome, Dave. Welcome, Dave. Thanks for inviting me. So we just had dinner. Then after that, we watched the movie. And this is the part where we talk about it. So let's start with first impressions. Okay. All right. So what was your first impression of Beetlejuice? Alec Baldwin looked really, really young in this movie. Like I can't remember him looking any younger in anything I've seen him in. So that was kind of actually shocking. And also you said that you probably hadn't seen this movie maybe since the eighties, right, Cheryl? Right. Yeah. And okay. Dave, Dave, when's the last time you saw it? I don't think I've ever seen the movie all the way through. Okay. But I think okay. this was, how about you, Travis? Yeah. I saw it way back in the day, but I mean, had not even seen parts of it on TV. I think, okay. you know, yeah. And I since think, then. I think up to a week ago, I'm kind of between where you guys are at. I've saw maybe parts of it. I don't know if I saw the whole thing. Now, Abby, how about I'm, you? I'm a big Tim Burton fan, so I had seen it dozens of times. And, I mean, not in a while, but I've seen it lots of times. Big fan over here. So, yeah, I basically was like, babe, we're doing Beetlejuice. They're coming out with a new movie in, like, two weeks. Um, September 6th is the first day of the movie. It'll be premiering in theaters. It's going to have a lot of the original cast, including Michael Keaton, obviously, and Winona Ryder. So definitely going to drag him to the theater. All right. So Dave, you maybe didn't see this whole thing in the 80s, but now you've just seen it. What are your first impressions? Mildly entertaining. <laughs> Mildly entertaining. I heard some yawning during the movie. I heard some yawning come from that There guy. might have been some snoring, in fact, at some point <laughs> oh, no. there. So is it just the genre? Tim Burton is an unusual genre. It's like... Fantasy slash, it's a little dark humor. I don't know how to even describe it. I wouldn't say horror. I also read that Tim Burton, his ideas and vision was to have kind of a B-movie type of feel to like the set. For example, when G uh, Gina Davis or Barbara is digging the grave, you know, it's <laughs> cardboard and oh, yeah. all like, this different stuff. It's Cushion, like foam. It's like very foam. 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 Yeah, foam. Yeah. yeah, I think he wanted, from his childhood days, he wanted to kind of relive that in this movie. He said he does not like CG and tries to use as much real life stuff and not so much rely on computer generated. It's stop motion. It's claymation. It's maybe like puppet. I, mean, I don't know about puppets, but... You can definitely see the snake was a puppet. The snake looked like a puppet. Oh, yeah, it was. Yeah, oh. and, and I think the B movie feel made it interesting, mm -hmm. but it's just not my genre. Okay, and it also just felt very contrived. You know, here we are in twenty twenty four, and everything is CGI and mm -hmm. all that stuff, and just uh, you know, state of the art kind of technology, and mm -hmm. it was just her like going into the sand and. <laughs> You know, the sandstorm and the sand worm and all that was just just contrived. Fake looking. Me. Yeah, fake. I I like that part. I like that aspect. Of course. I you like do. the old school. I, I like the old school. I, I can see the interest in that. Yeah. I mean I think it added to uh, you know, to the film for sure. I think I see it as like an art form mm -hmm. where he's like trying to figure out how to create these scenes without the use of this technology, which at the time in 88 would have been very new um, and not used so much. So at the time it was like out of necessity, whereas I'm really interested to see this new one. Is it going to have that feel or is it going to feel like a more modern movie with some special effects that are upgraded? But it's definitely I, kind of a throwback to the, the old school B movie, B horror movies of the, of the 50s, right? I mean, just cheesy, but trying to get their point across. I also wonder if Tim Burton maybe made a model, you know, kind of like the way Adam Maitland does oh. in in the movie, where because it just, the set and the house and the the sandworm and all that stuff kind of look like, like you could see how it might have, he made, maybe made a model of it. I also read about the new one that they reproduced the attic scene 
with the model exactly the same. And Winona in an interview was like, said when she saw it, she was like visibly moved because when she walked into the attic scene, into the set, it looked exactly how she wow. remembered it. So they're going to, there's going to be some nostalgia with this new one. There's going to be a recreation, at least of the attic scene, the attic set. Is it just Winona and Michael Keaton that are um, No, also Catherine O'Hara, which was Delia Dietz, the stepmother. I don't oh, know. She's still in it. Huh? I wonder if she's more likable because in this movie, she's not very likable. <laughs> she's funny. Now, I think we determined that Mr. Dietz will not be in the movie. <laughs> and why is that? He might have had some indiscretions. The actor <laughs> had some indiscretions. We just refer to him as Ed Rooney because yeah. that's the role that I think of when I see that actor. But Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Yes, he's had some, he's had some run-ins with the law, so he's <laughs> not in this. I'm wondering if they're going to kill him off because I watched the trailer. There was a funeral scene, so I was like, okay, whose funeral is this? It has is to it, be his. Is it the dad? Like, I feel like it probably is. That'll be interesting. interesting. And then she has. Um, Winona Ryder character has a daughter who's a teenager. She goes to this school, the Miss Shannon School for the Girls, like the first one. Um, and that's about all we know. Like, we don't get a lot from the trailer, but just enough to pique my interest. I'm, I'm ready to see it. I'm excited. So I was like, babe, we have to do Beetlejuice. <laughs> so I dragged all these guys in here because apparently I'm the one, only one that really likes the movie. Well, we'll wait till the end for people to give their thumbs up or okay. thumbs down. But, all right. But you might be the minority here. I might. I mean, I also love like other Tim Burton's, like Edward Scissorhands, I love. And it's definitely an acquired taste. And then Peavy's Big Adventure is one of my favorite movies of all time. So Tim Burton fan over here. Nightmare Before Christmas, not so much. I'm not really big on the animation stuff. I like the sort of non-CG, old school, you know, spooky factor that resonates with me for sure. All right. So, so how does Beetlejuice balance comedy and horror elements in this movie? I think the, the horror elements are kind of... Not really horror. It's kind of like tongue and cheek horror. You know, it's 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 trying to pull off what it kind of looks like, but not really knowing it's not actually going to scare you or create that kind of tension. There really wasn't places of a lot of tension in terms of what a typical horror film would the set you up is for. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, and the Maitlands. I thought they were just very quirky ghosts. You know, they <laughs> likable, likable, quirky <laughs> ghosts. Yeah. But yeah. they start off, it's so interesting that they're they're dead. Like they realize they're dead and they're not like they That's why they're ghosts, Travis. Like, I, I get that. Yeah. <laughs> but they don't freak but they don't, out. They they're don't not even freaking know. out. They're kinda like, Well, I guess we died. Yeah. You know, it was kinda it wasn't this big dramatic moment. It's like, oh, like oh, guess we're dead. Okay, well, whatever that means. Are we halfway to heaven? Are we halfway to hell? And how long is this gonna last? And the concept of time seemed to be really confusing. Because it was like she stepped outside, or he stepped outside first and encountered the first sandworm. And then she was like, you were gone for hours. But then for him, it was just like a minute. And then when they got to the waiting room, they said it had been three months. months yeah. And they just, for them, it was just like a few days. So it was interesting how, like, the concept of time was blurred. Mm-hmm. I thought but, that was cool. But that does give me hope for the afterlife because if I can step away from my wife for a minute and be gone for hours. Oh, no. <laughs> Stop. That's a good thing. Okay, his <laughs> wife is on a girl's trip, so she couldn't be here with us tonight. <laughs> Don't tell her I said that. <laughs> she might watch this. <laughs> well, I have a fun fact. Okay. I don't know if any of you noticed, but uh, Beetlejuice is not really in the movie that much. And if you were to sum up all the minutes that he, you want to take a guess? How many minutes he appears in the movie? It's probably less than 20. Mm-hmm. It is less than 20. Yeah. 14. Whoa. Wow. Wow. Out of an hour and a half? Yep. Yet Michael Keaton is like the big star of this movie. The star. Here's the confusing thing about Beetlejuice. So in the movie, it's Beetlegeist. It's spelled different. Well, they pronounce Beetlegeist. And then mm-hmm. like later in the movie, they start saying Beetlejuice. So mm-hmm. it's like, what happened like when they were filming the movie? They're like all of a sudden like, okay, we want to like, Call it Beetlejuice instead his, of Beetlegeist. I think they grave. were using the Dutch Romanian spelling. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> on his grave, it's spelled with a G, but on the movie cover, it's spelled with a J. But Cheryl had some insight into the name, which I didn't know, and she told me over dinner. Tell me what you were sharing about the origin of the name. So, and I don't know exactly how it's pronounced, 
betel guys or what Beetlejuice or whatever, but it is um, a star in the Orion mm-hmm. constellation. I was today years old when I realized that. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I, I didn't know that either. Like, I don't know if the movie producers. And it's Tim like Burton one of the brighter stars. I think it like maybe the 15th brightest star in the sky or something like that. Yeah. Did they see that and be like, oh, that's a cool name. We'll just use that. And then change it because it's easier to say. I, I have no idea where this came from. but It would have thought it was a foreign film if they had used that Bittle alternate Geist. spelling. Geist. Nobody would have went to see it. So. Right. All right. So thinking about Beetlejuice, what makes him such a memorable and iconic character? I think it's dental hygiene. <laughs> <laughs> or lack thereof. <laughs> Well, Michael Keaton is just phenomenal with his physical comedy and improvisation. Um, I also read that a, a lot of what he said in the movie was improv. That seems to be a running theme with our 80s movies. The scene where he hacks into his oh. in his shirt and says he's going to save, save it for, for later. later. <laughs> save that guy oh. for later. Evidently, Alec Baldwin was just beside himself laughing and could not get over him that. For, and they had to redo that scene several times. You want to know of all the alternates that were considered for the part of Beetlejuice? Yes. Dude, yeah. So yeah. Tim Tell Burton, us. you will never believe who he wanted. His initial dream was to have Sammy Davis Jr. Really? Play this character. Yeah, I have no idea how My that goodness. came up. And I don't know if that was ever pursued, but the other two that they uh, talked to were uh, or, and considered were Sam Kennison, comedian, oh, and Dudley Moore, were the two kind of finalists along with uh, with him. So I could, I could see Sam Kennison more than Dudley Ow! Moore. Yeah. Ow! <laughs> <laughs> Is anybody here to help you? No way! <laughs> it's a lot of screaming. Wow, I'm glad they picked Michael Keaton. He, yeah, like I you can't, can't imagine it being anybody else. I cannot. No. I cannot. He nailed it. He did. And he'll be on board for the next one, so that'll be interesting. It'll be interesting to see if he gets more airtime. I feel like surely he will. More than 14 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> Let's hope it. But that's crazy that you only have 14 minutes and you're that memorable. Yeah. You know? It tells you you did a good job. All right, so let's talk about the other characters. Let's talk about the Maitlands. So we have Alec Baldwin playing Adam Maitland. And then Barbara Maitland is uh, Gina Davis, who we saw in Flet recently. What did you guys think about their characters? I really liked Barbara Maitland. She was gentle and kind, uncertain of herself, but then showed that she was smart and a problem solver. And I loved her relationship with Lydia. There was that one moment with the real estate agent where you got the impression that she wished she had kids because she said something about this house should be for someone with a family. And then she goes, oh, sorry. Um, and then you see her face kind of downtrodden. It made me wonder if, you know, they'd had some kind of problems. They talked about it right before. I don't know if you, that they could try again because they were going to be on their vacation. Oh, oh I, I didn't that. catch that. Yeah, They're very right, parental the very... with Winona mm-hmm. in the yeah, that's mm-hmm. what I was thinking is like they're kind of like parent figures to her, which is is really sweet. But also you see at the end of the movie, like when she comes home from school and they're asking her about how she did on her, her test homework. and her homework and things like that. So you can obviously see that they have some interest from a parental perspective. I like that. How long were they stuck in the house? So it's like 125 said, years? They said 125 years. So then it's like, okay, what happens after that? So if they're trying again, they've got some time on their hands. <laughs> they do. <laughs> Well, sure and that, that wallpaper, works. that explains the wallpaper. Yes. <laughs> Deliver me from L.L. Bean. And then they put the wallpaper back after they, at the end, <laughs> they had remodeled the house back to how it was at the beginning. So what do you think about the movie's portrayal of the afterlife? Weird. Really weird. Awful. Yeah. I hope it's not like that. I hope it's yeah. not. <laughs> I don't believe that it's going to be like that. The waiting room. Yeah, the eternal waiting room. Shrunken head dude. (laughs) The shrunken head dude. Okay, wait a minute. So the shrunken head guy shrinks Beetlejuice's head at the very end of the movie. Hey, what are you doing? Hey, stop it. Hey. Are they going to just ignore that piece in the new one? Or is he going to start out with a shrunken head and then somehow get back? Good question. (laughs) Only one way to find out. Go watch it. We will find out in a couple weeks. 
Abby will find out. You can tell oh. us. You guys aren't going to go with me? I'm not going to go to l- movies alone. I don't think I've ever done that. Yeah, this might be a first. Oh, no. <laughs> <gasps> uh, that's called foreshadowing. Yes. Oh, no, <laughs> you guys. I think I have uh, to, w- to wash my hair that night. <laughs> you have to wash your hair. I've got a thing. <laughs> you got a thing. Oh, man. All right, so favorite scene or line from the movie? It's showtime. Yeah, that's got to be. Showtime. The juice is loose. The juice is loose. That's pretty good. <laughs> One is Agnet. He's trying to lure the fly. Hey, come here. I got something good for you. I'll have a little pipe. That is the first and only time we see the Zagnut. Okay, should we try one? Well, since you brought it up, I think it's time to try it. You guys. All right. We found some Zagnut bars. This is a real, actual candy bar. It's not just a prop from the movie. Oh. It's made by Hershey. So it's probably an old school, like it's probably an 80s. Candy bar that's giving, fallen out of favor. I have pretty low expectations <gasps> going in on this deal. He he only but, is saying that because it has coconut in but, it. He but, doesn't like coconut. But you, you brought up something, like that, and I just looked at it. So when I was a kid, I lived in East Texas, and there was a a candy making factory in Lufkin, which was like twenty miles away, and they had something that looked Atkins. eerily close to this. It was Atkins. Yeah, it was, it was called the. Peanut butter bar. No, it was called the chick. Uh, oh, the chick stick. Chick stick. They made the peanut butter bar and the chick stick. Have you ever had a chick stick? This looks like a chick stick. All right, it's got so coconut. This looks and smells Pretty like tasty. a chick stick. So I'm guessing now I'm mm. going to revise it that I'm probably going to like this. It's surprisingly know. better than I thought. Yeah. ASMR. All right. <laughs> this is a chick stick. This is like the inside of a peanut of a butterfinger. Butterfinger. Mm. Wrapped in wrapped in coconut. Dang, that's good. Oh, Brush. that's really good. You are okay. Zagnut is really good. This is a chewy, gummy chicka stick because it's like kind of like gummy in the middle. Mm. And I would just like to point out that 1.51 ounces is only $2.79. <laughs> 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 and Hershey's made $27.51 ounces <laughs> yeah. of chewy goodness. These are a little rare, but you can still get them. But we had to go to a specialty local candy store to get it. And it was a little pricey. Right. I think they exploited you. Mm. Oh, that's really good, though. It is. I take back all the bad things and all the bad thoughts I had about Zach. Mm, yeah, Keith was scared to try it. <laughs> going to keep him in stock now. That is dang good. Mm, that's really good. It, it tastes like the chicken stick, though. I think I'm, if it was dipped somebody in chocolate, copied. it would be. Yeah, I thought it was going to be <clears throat> dipped in chocolate, but it's actually not. If you read it, crunchy peanut butter toasted coconut. I don't know why I thought it had chocolate on it. It does not. I don't so. know how those are not more popular. I could bring it back. Let's bring it. Bring it back. back. The Zagnut. All right. Hershey's. Everyone go out and call Hershey and tell me you want a Zagnut. It's a Hershey's. Yeah. Hershey's. Bring back the Zagnut. I don't know if they need to bring it back because they still make them. I mean, they need to do some commercials or something. Nobody's buying these. Maybe they'll do commercials with the new Beetlejuice. There you go. Come on. Product placement. Hey, and it's only 200 calories per bar. Mm. I think it's per bite. It's per bite. (laughs) 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 How many, wait, how many servings are in that? I can hear myself getting fatter. Only nine grams of fat, <laughs> so it's not bad. Not terrible. That's, hey, that's less calories than my little kind bar that I have. Oh, that had you questioning your choices. I'm starting Zagnuts every day. <laughs> the For Zagnut breakfast. diet. <laughs> Is that protein? A Zagnut a day <laughs> keeps Zagnut. the doctor away. Keeps you mean juice away. two eggs over easy in a Zagnut? <laughs> that's right. <laughs> um, what did you think about the music? The score for this movie made the movie better. I liked it. It's a hook, nice hook at the beginning. Yeah, that first scene has that long score. So. Mm-hmm. Also, We're we get it. a lot of Harry Belafonte in this in this movie, which <laughs> yeah. is kind of a fun throwback. I like the integration of the old school mambo music. I think that's fun. I mean, what did you guys think about the seance or, or the dinner party scene? It's not really a seance, the dinner party scene. I did not serve shrimp cocktail tonight. Um, I hope you guys aren't disappointed that we didn't have any, like, face-grabbing shrimp cocktail. <laughs> <laughs> I'm good without that. <laughs> I think that would have happened if my wife was here since she's deathly allergic to shellfish. But and so is he. <laughs> <laughs> so you don't have to worry about getting shellfish in this house. But I did encourage her to have... Yeah, he's like, you should do the shrimp cocktail. I was like, no, we're not doing that. But that scene is so good. It's a great yeah. scene, but even when you're looking at those shrimps sitting there and they're all, like, Weird. Weird colored. I mean, we It were... made me hungry. <laughs> <laughs> it really did. So we know that the Deo, at least that song, is going to be in the new movie because it showed up in the 
trailer. So we'll we'll have to see if they have any other fun scenes like that. But that is probably one of my favorite scenes of yeah, the uh, movie. I say, I mean, at that part, I, you know, I, I know everyone was kind of falling asleep, and I think that was kind of when people started waking back up again <laughs> tonight. You know, it's like that scene, and then when Beetlejuice shows up more, then everyone kind of woke back up. The, it's, the it's, wedding it's, scene. It's like the first half of the movie, everyone just kind of, you know. Well, I mean, we should let everyone know. It's almost 11 p.m., so we're, we're having a late night. So what happens if you do say Beetlejuice three times? Mm. Ooh, I don't know if we don't want to do find it. Out. Don't do it. Don't do it. You're gonna go home, and then we're gonna be stuck here with him. <laughs> <laughs> and he's kind of a pervert. I'm something out of something. Just something. Yeah. Hey, hey, hey! Oh. Oh. Any other favorite scenes? I really enjoyed the credits. Oh. <laughs> 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 Me too. <laughs> I'm changing mine <laughs> to the credits. Oh, my gosh. My favorite scene is when the Maitlands get sucked into the model, and then they're like, they realize they're in the model. I think that's really cool how they did that. Where, and then they had to, like, dig up the grave, and it was all the layers of stuff. And then he comes, he pops out for the first time. He I love that the part. car. Yeah, that was cool, too. I like that. <laughs> He's in the model twice then. They go in the model the first time when they meet Beetlejuice. And then that other time is the, is the second time. I struggle because, you know, I know Tim Burton intentionally didn't want to use, like, CG and things like that. And that probably wasn't even a thing back in 88. But yeah, it was pretty cheesy as far <laughs> as the uh, the effects. And I yeah. think in 88, he could have done better. You do? I think so. Okay. I mean, don't you think that's what he was trying to accomplish? Yeah. He said he cheese. was trying to. Well, I think yeah. I, I think that was his intention, and may, maybe that's partly where I struggle because I'm like, it's pretty cheesy. Like, yeah. let's not even use real grass. Let's just use foam. And, and I know? think we're on the same page that it. I mean, you can appreciate it, yeah. but it's not your deal. Yeah. yeah. Okay. It's like I want it to be more realistic. Mm -hmm. Maybe he's trying to be unexpected. I think Tim Burton's always trying to do things unexpected. And I think he must have really liked Wynonna Ryder because then she appears in, as the main star also in Edward Scissorhands. And to be fair, in the 80s, I really liked Winona Ryder as well. Oh, yeah. She's very pretty. She's also in Heathers, which is one of my favorite movies. Another good movie. These guys, whenever I bring it up because I want to have that one for an 80s um, dinner movie, like everyone's all like either they've never seen it or they're like, yeah, I don't really want to do that one. But I love that movie. Good movie. Thank you. Watch okay, you're invited. You. <laughs> invited. You're all invited. I think he's trying to earn him an invite yeah. to come back. So he's well, we will be having spaghetti for that one. He's, There's he's no play, doubt. He's playing to the crowd here. Okay. Right. <laughs> all right. Noted. All right. So the final question we're asked, has Beetlejuice held up? Oh, has it held up? Has it held up? So we're going to give it a thumbs up or thumbs down whether Beetlejuice has held up over the years. Since 1988. Yeah. Okay. All right, so on a count of three, one, two, three, has Beetlejuice set up? One, two, three. Oh. Uh, Dave, oh. I can't believe you gave it a thumbs up. Thank I, you, Dave. I, I don't necessarily appreciate the movie, but I think it's still as relevant today as it was when it was made. Yeah. It doesn't seem dated. It doesn't seem dated, right, because it doesn't feel like the 80s. Right. It's like a whole other realm. Mm. That's fair. Yeah. All right, All right. I'll ask this question a little differently. Did you like the movie or not? One, two, three. Oh, man. We got some wavering <laughs> half thumbs yeah. over here. He's over half here. Thumb. He was trying to talk me out of doing this movie for dinner movie, and I was like, no, we're doing it. We watched this like a week ago. I'm like, that. now he I goes, remember why I never watched this again. It's he, the worst movie ever. He thinks it's weird. It's not the worst movie it's, ever. It's just not your genre. Yeah. It's just not your thing. It's not not your thing. thing. I know my thing. And that's okay. Yeah. It's fine. Uh, there's this guy on the 80s cruise that dresses up like the Be like Beetlejuice um, every night. <laughs> For every costume party, he always shows up as Beetlejuice. Like Beetlejuice in the tuxedo for the wedding, and then Beetlejuice in the stripey suit. He has it's. How does he pull off the shrunken head? Oh, wow. He doesn't have that Ooh. one. Ooh. Ooh, I want to ask him about that and next he doesn't Amateur. He needs <laughs> <laughs> and Beetlejuice guy, I'm sorry, I don't know your real name. It's but Bill. Um, Bill, if you're watching. He also has not done the carousel hat i think that, no, one, that would one would be a good, one. a good one you should do that next year do that Bill. now you did say with carousel hat that he actually had to that was like <gasps> legit he had to wear that right? yes i saw an interview with michael keaton and he was com kind of complaining about how tim burton doesn't use the cg stuff and he was like yeah none of that is cg he's like i had to wear that hat it was really heavy 
And he said it was just physically exhausting. That they was also had those those really and then they snake had those things on those, each those hand that are rolled yeah. up. Yeah, and so he was saying that that scene was like the hardest one to film because of the logistics of the hat. And then if he stood up and the hat was like slightly tilted, then he'd be like, "Cut, do it again." And he's like, that one was really hard to pull off. Knowing that after hearing that interview, I was like, okay, new appreciation. Like it might look cheesy, but actually the cheesiness makes it harder because you just didn't draw it in or you just didn't do a computer thing or green screen. Yeah, it's all real. Real effort into doing those scenes. Yeah. So, I mean, I think that's cool. So I'm really interested to see how they do that with the new one. Is it going to be CG? Is it, is it going to be... Cheesy, as you would say, or is it going to be like the real deal? We'll find out. We will find out. What was Tim Burton's most recent movie before oh, this one? I don't know. There's The Corpse Bride. Okay, he did the Alice in Wonderland in 2010. Remember that? With the that Johnny, four, Johnny Depp. That was 14, 14 years ago. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he did that Franken Weenie. A lot of these. That was 2012. 2012. So a lot of these are animated. So we skipped out on that because I. Think of an animated movie as being more for kids. I did enjoy the um, Johnny Depp adaptation of the Alice in Wonderland. We went and saw it in the movies. It had the 3D glasses, but that was forever ago. Did you know that uh, he directed Pee-wee's Big Adventure? I did know that. I That's one of the reasons I that. love Pee-wee's. <laughs> wasn't that like where he got to start? It might have been. It's 85. Yeah. Oh, Batman Forever, 95. James and the Giant Peach. Well, he's got a lot of movies, you guys. And nothing recent. Uh, mm -hmm. Dumb Big Fish was I good. I think Dumbo was the most recent one I saw. When was that? I don't <laughs> even remember that. 2019. Okay. Oh, Dumbo. man, I did not see that. Dumbo's so sad, I probably avoided it. Oh. You really liked um, Sweeney Todd. I love Sweeney Todd. And that's a, that's a Tim Burton you're right. It's been a while since we've really, especially with the live action, because those are most of those are animated, but to have a live action movie, it's been a while. We see what Tim has has in store for us. Well, I guess I will. <laughs> I'll let you. I'll let you know. All right. Well, thanks so much for joining us for today's podcast. Dave, thanks for joining us. Thanks yeah. for inviting me. Always great to have Good Travis box. and Cheryl Appreciate here. Appreciate being thanks. here. Yeah. Thanks for joining us, and thank you for joining us. And don't forget to watch our other podcast. If you enjoyed this one, we will link a playlist below. And we will see you next time. And I get to pick the next movie. <laughs> okay, you said it. <laughs> Good night. Good night.